Welcome back. Hello. This is Trisha. And I'm Evangelist Laurie and, and we're kicking, kicking it, it with Jesus. Jesus. So last week was a doozy. I really, I, I really immensely enjoyed that whole conversation. I feel like I could keep talking. Absolutely. But Absolutely. I mean, an hour and 45 minutes was, I think, a little bit long, so. In, in one shot? Right. Yes, yes. We didn't but. even mean to do that. Uh, but it was so good. The conversation was good. So. So, before we hit record, we were having a conversation. And so now we're going to just let you in on the little conversation we were having. So, we were talking about church hurt. Mm. And let's face it, this is a real thing. Yeah. This is a real thing. Me and my family have experienced church hurt on a deep level. Yeah. Deep. Yeah. And I, I'm still, you know, reaping the consequences of it. Right. My children are not where I'd like them to be. Mm. But God is faithful. Absolutely. But as we were talking, we were saying how some people that have seen some of our reels, yeah. we've been praying for them. Yeah. Because it's clear. Even if they say not to. Right. <laughs> well, that's our job. You know, we because we're not doing this for anything else but for the people and for, for Jesus, right? you know. For them to experience Jesus. Come the way on. We've experienced Jesus. Come on. Not to be judging them or whatever. Absolutely but not. We're all hurt. We are all hurt. Even if we're saved or not, so we are all hurt Come in on. some way. And a lot of it does stem from church hurt. If it you does. think about it. It does. We blame God for what people have done. And I think, you know, we we make this this mistake and this misconception in our hearts and minds of when you step into the church and the leader of the church, the pastor the priest, wh whoever they may be in leadership, the shepherd. Yeah. We place them inside of ourselves. We place them and the members of the church that have been there, mm -hmm. Buru scat years, right. we place them in a, in a seat and in a position that they have no business being in. Right. Because they are made of dirt just like we are. Right. And just because and I'm not saying disrespect or dishonor, you know, the pastor or the pre, that's not what I'm saying. No, just Everybody deserves that, honor, but remember. That they are sinners and they battle with sin just as much as we do. Come on. Just because they are being led by God through the word and to preach to God's people. They still turn around and go to bed at night asking God for help because they're battling with some kind of sin. Right. We do put them on like a pedestal though. We do. You know? And it's wrong. Absolutely. It's wrong. I mean, you know, they may know the Bible in and out, you know, but that person was broken. Yeah. Cried out to a savior that hears and restores and redeems. And, you know, they put him in a position of leadership and, you know, and I get it, mm -hmm. I get it. And so, you know, it just makes me feel really bad. And, you know, like I was saying to you, they were saying yesterday, I was listening to this. I don't even know what it was, but I heard Miley Cyrus Christian Bale and I can't remember who the who the third person was and they were you know hail Satan and one is saying you know I wouldn't be where I am without him and and I'm thinking to myself mm, yeah well you know you can hail him all you want right. but I promise you he is not the reason unless you've given yourself over but the thing is the two also is that he doesn't care about you 
he just uses you as a pawn in the game that he's playing with Come God. On. You know what I mean? Like, Come on. once he's done and once he's used enough of what he needed from you, he's going, like you said last week, he's going to spit you out. He's done with you. Without doubt. And where we have people out there that are like, oh, I wouldn't be here without, well, when you're done finishing, he's not going to use you anymore, so to speak. You know what I mean? And then where are you going to be? Like I you do. said, broken, hurt, lost, looking for something. You know, and I don't know how we're here, but we're here. So let's just play. <laughs> so it. let's talk about so it. So let's talk about <laughs> it. You know, <clears throat> I'm just going to say, if, if a demon ever stepped into your room, like for real, for real, I'm not talking about, you know, I'm talking about a straight up, demon from hell mm. stepped into your room who you calling on <laughs> who you calling on jesus, jesus jesus i know that's right because listen when i tell you that they really they strip you i can remember nikki cruz dino was talking to talking about him last week but i remember nikki cruz having an encounter and he wrote it in his book. His, the name of his book is Run, Baby, Run. And he encountered a demon because he was the head of a gang in New York right, back in the right. day. You know what I mean? Right. You think you think that the enemy is going to let him go that easy? Like, nah. And so reading his book, it was like, phew. you know, he was dope at it. And look, they didn't have... You know, he started Teen Challenge, but they didn't have that right. back right. in the day. They locked him in a room oh, for weeks. Room, yeah. And no, it was a, it was a bedroom. They locked him in the room. His his best friend Israel was with him, and that's how he got clean. And you know, that must have been hard. You, and you know what though, I think. When you have to fight for something, you appreciate that Absolutely. something when you fight for it. Right. If it's handed to you, you don't appreciate it as much as right. you would if you had to fight for Outside. it. Okay. And so, you know, his his being clean and his walk with God. I guess I don't really know his story. Like, just like the bits and pieces of what Dina said and then what you're yeah. saying. I'd be interested to read that book now. But... What people don't realize or understand, like people that dabble in witchcraft and all that stuff, the moment you stop dabbling in that and you do see a demon, like you said, that's when it does become real because you don't know how real it is. Of course, they're going to let you, they're going to allow you to keep dabbling as mm. long as you're dabbling into that and you're not trying to go towards Jesus, then, you know what I mean? Like, you're already doing yeah. these, casting these things. Like, okay, great, we got her, we got him, whatever. We don't need to show ourselves. And that's the truth. Because even, like, I may not have saw a demon, per se, like, a demon walked in my room. But when I got, when I did ecstasy that night, I know I seen demons that right. night. There was multiple. You know what I mean? So... No, bro, I, I'm good. Right. You know what I mean? Like, and those things were small. The Bible says they could be like 13 feet tall. Like, good, I'm good. Mm -hmm. I'm good. I don't want to risk yeah, that. Yeah, but I remember, you know, I remember the day after, first thing in the morning, <laughs> you called me, can I come over? Yeah. And you came over. You were freaked. Absolutely. You were freaked. That was... And so, you know, I, I really think that and that was just like you tiny know, little right. I mean, they were like this big, but I could have punted those ones. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Like, some of these demons that come into people's rooms and how like mm -mm. listen, I you know, I I pick and choose what what I listen to and what I don't. Right. But one particular night, this was years ago, my husband was making dad was making dinner and it was ready. And I had the TV on, um, and I think it was the Word Network at the time. I don't really listen to it now anymore, or TBN. But they had this thing on, and it was like a clip of this guy 
His name was Bill Weiss. W-E-I-S-S, I I think. I've heard that name. And it was, the name of his book was 23 Minutes in Mm -hmm. Hell. And something he said caught my attention. So I, I shifted my attention to what he was saying. And he was given his testimony. And let me tell you something, Trisha. Like, unbelievable. And my spirit resonated with him. I knew that what this man was saying was true. Mm. He really did. He went, he went to hell. Yeah. God shielded him that he was a Christian. He went to hell. And he said, he asked the Lord why he went. And the Lord said, because my, my, even my people, my people who are called by my name mm. don't even believe the hell is real. How do you not believe right? the hell is not real? Hello? Like, are you serious right now? And if you think that you're going to have like this huge party, let me be the first to tell you you're not. Right. Because if you think about it, and like we've had this conversation about 23 minutes in hell or whatever it's called, and it's, and I watched that whole video on him. If you just stop and think, the God of the universe created everything, Mm. right? Everything that is good, light, breath. Say it. Say it. That's not in hell. Nothing God created for us to enjoy is going to be in hell. So just think about that. Like he was talking about how like when he was down there, like even the breathing, because there's no air, the air in your lungs is like. Because <gasps> it's putrid. Right. So it's pure darkness. You can't see anything. Not even your hand in front of your face. Right. So how in the world are you going to be with your friend? Right. But you know what could probably, what I, I mean, this isn't fact or whatever, but you know what can probably see down there? The demons. You know how dogs can see in the dark? Like how they yep. have those eyes? I guarantee that they can see you. Come on. Come on. And I, I'm good with like, there's no way. No way. And that's the truth. But I said that because Jesus had taken him actually up into heaven as well. So as they were going up out of hell, mm-hmm. He said, the cavern, I have always believed for as long as I've been saved, and I I believe it's because Jesus put it in me. I believe that hell is at the center of our earth. Mm. I do. I do. Interesting. It's interesting to think about that because the center of our earth is hot. I, I really feel like the Lord put that in me when I first got saved. Not to go off subject really quick, but can we talk about that for one second? Absolutely. Because I feel as though, you know how everyone's saying like the whole like, oh, everything's getting warmer and warmer and warmer. My belief is Jesus says he's making a new earth, right? And what happened when he, when God wiped out the first people, it was rain and a flood, right? What do you think is going to happen? What I think is going to happen is it's from the center up. Everything is getting warm. Everything is getting... I think that's how it's going to be fire. You know what I mean? Well, be- it, that is how the how the world is going to end. Fire. And look at look burn. at what... Everyone's like, oh, you know, global warming. we got to stop doing this. we got to stop pro- reproducing because we have too many people. Like, that's never going to stop because I believe that the earth is just... Jesus is... And if hell is down there... He's bringing it up. Come on. Little by little. It's coming up, it's coming up, it's coming up. And then eventually it's just going to be done. And that's the truth. That's the truth. I don't like the heat. So if Jesus could just like take me home before that. (laughs) You know, I'd love to be able to say, you know, everybody differs on that. I'm praying that I'm out too. I mean, let's talk about that. You know, (laughs) I want to be out. I don't want to, I don't want to be here for tribulation. I don't, but. Whatever Jesus has in store, like, as long as, Father, keep my heart with you, you know, don't give me anything that will ever take my heart from you. 
Right. Because I know where I was, I know where I am, and I know I had nothing to do with right. it except a yes. Right. That's it. So let's go back to what we were saying before we bunny trail. He was so coming up. He was coming up and in, in the cavern of hell there was demons he said there was demons chained to the cavern, right. which is biblical. He said, and they were of all sizes and shapes. Mm -hmm. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Yeah. Like, and I'm saying to myself, mm. like you've got like this little mosquito like, <laughs> mosquito -like. you know what I mean? Bat like, okay? Demon. What's that for? You know what I mean? Like, I just, tormenting spirit, you know, tormenting demon. I mean, because seriously, Trisha, I mean, I think that people don't realize the little things that you do, the little things that you dabble in. Mm -hmm. I, I know I didn't. I can, look, total honesty, I have a girlfriend, she's been a friend for years, years, I was a teenager, and I remember being at her house one night, and there was a bunch of us, I was 16 maybe, 16, 17. I've talked to, I, I remember back in, back in the day talking to two psychics and thinking to myself, y'all are full of baloney. Like, right. really? Because what you were telling me was just ridiculous. I wasn't a Christian. I wasn't even close. Right. But I'm thinking, but I was with her and a bunch of people that night and she decides we're gonna have a seance. Ooh, no. Yo, I mean, what do I know? I'm only like 16, 17 maybe, tops. So I was like, yeah. So she starts it. She got this stupid Ouija board. Mm -hmm. So she starts this thing. She starts rolling her eyes. I'm not lying. <laughs> She stopped rolling her eyes and I'm looking at her like, you okay? <laughs> what in the heck is happening? <laughs> and I'm like, oh, uh-uh. Now she, my name is, I forgot what she said her name was. I think Jessica or something. And I'm a little girl and I died in a barn. And I mean, she's just going to town with this story. And I'm like, right. my heart's racing. I'm like, I don't want to get out of here. Get me off this ride. And, uh, you know, then, I mean, she escalates this thing so high, so wide. Everybody's like, and then she's like, ah! And I'm like, I'm like, ah! Thinking to myself, what are you doing? She's like, I was only playing. But I am going to tell you, I never felt right in that house again. And it wasn't, I really don't think it was the story. I really don't think it was the story. I think some things were opened up mm -hmm. without her knowing, without us knowing. You know what I mean? Absolutely. I think the enemy's like, yep, go. Go. And I just, mm -mm. And I don't think any kind of spirituality stuff like that. I'm all set. I'm good. I never was. Like I said, it was only twice, and you know, mm -mm. both times was like this. I ain't never going in front of somebody. Don't tell me my future, because if you tell me I'm gonna oh, die, I'm gonna hit you. Right? I'm gonna take these earrings out. We're fighting. Yeah. No, I never. Like even growing up, I. I mean. I never dabbled in stuff like that. I was good. I don't know if it's because I just always knew, I could always feel that spirit realm, that darkness. I could feel it. Yeah. And I could feel the darkness around me my whole life, which it's not something that I could ever really explain, but I knew that there was something there and I was all set. I was all set with God too, but I was all set with 
Satan and his his little Come on. I didn't wanna I didn't want to do with any of it. I did used to go to haunted houses a lot as a teenager. But even then, like I I was not into it. But now I can't I can't go to a haunted house now. You could not get me. <laughs> so I tried and I'm not gonna lie. I tried. I think it was I think it was last year. So there was a bunch of us. And the bravest of us all went first. Mm -mm. Then it was my girlfriend. Then it was me. And then everybody else was in the caboose. And I said, every time somebody jumped, if you jump at me one more time, and I was rebuking and binding as I just walked through this hall, and everybody's like, what does that mean? (laughs) I bind you in Jesus' name. And everybody's like, and this this big old pig with with a knife came out, and I I bind you, don't come near me. <laughs> and he's looking he's like, don't he's do like, his what? job, right? <laughs> Just, I'm like, no, I, to I think, can't. Like, I don't get paid enough for this, <laughs> really. And I just I couldn't like. Why I I'm paying you to scare me? No. Why am I doing that? You want to know why I can't do it anymore? <clears throat> I I did it when I was younger. But I still hated it. But now I can't because, yes, they're they're made up people in costumes and stuff. But I can feel the darkness swirling around there. Yep. And just, it's like what the Most Bible definitely. says. The, the enemy's on Probably. the prowl. You know what I mean? Prowling around. And I, I'm good. Like, I, don't, I, I just believe in possession. I really do. Like... Come on. That's one thing that I'm like, uh-uh, I ain't watching that movie that is about possession. No, that spirit is not coming into me. Absolutely not. I cannot watch movies, even when I wasn't saved, about possession or like those exorcism right. ones or whatever. Uh-uh, no way. Because I feel like that is real. I think that nowadays people just allow it because they call into these spirits yeah. and not realizing what they're doing. And they're just like, here I am. Come and on in. Truth. And they're like, oh, sure. You're just going to open the door and I'm just going to step right in. Thank you. I don't even have to work that hard anymore. There has been, and I don't know why we're touching here, but so I know in prayer, the Lord has said that some horror movies right now, have an agenda there they were given over Mm. and there's an agenda but i remember one particular movie just watching the commercial yo no like i'm like whoever made this movie same thing with yeah i'm just gonna say American Horror Story. I've never watched that. I won't. Let me tell you something. The creator and that given over. Mm. And there's an agenda. The enemy has an agenda. And this commercial for this stupid movie, every time it came on, man my spirit would just go crazy and leap and I'm yeah. like, Lord, I'm sorry. I didn't know it was gonna come on. Like like I could feel my my spirit just go crazy and leap like right. get it off. Yeah. And it just and every once in a while a commercial for something stupid and you know but the enemy has full reign right now. That's what I mean. Like, people don't realize. And I, back to, like, church hurt. This is the problem that we have. Like, not everybody that has church hurt goes to the extreme of, like, well, I'm going to dabble into crystals or tarot cards and stuff like that. They just go about their life yep. of themselves. Yep. Which I think is probably even worse of... Dabbling into crystals. You're dabbling into self and not even realizing it. 
You know what I mean? Like, oh, I'm good. I, I'm, I can do this life by myself. I don't need any help. I've done, like, one of our commenters, you know, I've been to church and I've been baptized multiple times. That's sad to me. I feel bad because somebody, some human, or Amen. multiple humans, spoke into this person's life and completely turned him away from Jesus. You know what I hear? Because this happens a lot. All the time. If you have faith to believe that X, Y, and Z, when you pray, God's going to do. Yes, the word says that. It does. But it also says God's will. And I'd love to be able to say that your mom will be healed from cancer mm. or your father will live from the leukemia but God's will be done right and sometimes God's will crushes us yes crushes us and our faith stands on our a rock mm. but sometimes the winds blow right that's what the word says and so if we would just stop well you didn't have the faith to believe that your father and your father would be healed or your mother would be healed or your brother or your sister or you or your child or your child you didn't have the faith right that's horrible. And not only do you have to deal with that, but now you've got to deal with the enemy pushing the button inside of you mm -hmm. and giving you thoughts that are not yours. Right. See, where was God for you? You didn't have enough faith. You didn't, pray you didn't enough. believe enough. You didn't, yeah, you didn't, you didn't pray enough. You didn't worship enough. You didn't go to church enough. You didn't read your Bible enough. Come on, let's talk about it. Seriously. And that is, that is all the time. And so when I read that, I feel in my heart that there was an incident within that person's life. Right. What they were going through, what they were struggling with. That's why so many baptisms. Right. But you see, look. And honestly, though, like so many baptisms, because either you went to multiple churches and they were telling you, well, you need to be baptized here. Or you need to do, you need to be a member, to be a member or in order to, you know, even though you were baptized there, let's get baptized again to like re like a refresh of your sins like no you did it once because you believed in god and you you said it you believed in god and you said it with your heart and you said it out with your mouth and then you were baptized and that was it because jesus died for you jesus died on the cross for your sins for that come on for you to say that one time come on are we gonna slip back Probably sometimes, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna slip, we're gonna fall. That doesn't mean we have to keep getting baptized. So I don't know why these churches, you know what I mean, <laughs> or if, even in within yourself, make you feel like you weren't good enough the first time you got baptized. Come on, because you were good enough. Come you on. did it. You you called on Jesus. You wouldn't have been baptized the first time if you didn't call on Jesus. You know what I mean? I like, do. I just, I, the whole church hurt thing, it, it just, stri it's, it, it's deep within me too, because I'm so thankful that I had church hurt, to be honest, because I wouldn't be where I am today if my road didn't lead that way. You know what I mean? Like right. I had to go through that. My rough road, my, you know, being told that I wasn't going to get into heaven because I was a cheerleader, that did something to me when I was 13. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Yep. But look where I am now. You know what I mean? See, but you I appreciate it. it now. Right. 
back then when no, you I were hated still them all. Right. Everybody. It took God molding and shifting and working in you. Just like this person right. that made this comment. You can make the comment. Right. And there's no at all is there any offense no. that either of us t- take in that because we know right god is shifting and molding and making you into he's going to use what the devil intended for evil he's yeah. gonna turn that thing around and he's gonna make it good and you're gonna rise and be this diamond in the rough right for the king of kings and the lord of lords this is your journey you have to walk it you know so you know from right now you know, this person and, and how they feel and what they believe. I believe that what they're feeling is, is true. Right. Because well, like you said, I believe in logic. Which I can, I can understand. I can relate to. Sorry, there was a little red. I tried to bug. get it. As it oh. And no, that's like a little red. Sorry. <laughs> Get out of here. He's bleeding in my book in Revelation. Ah! We overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Hello. Oh, man. No, but I just feel like I just, I get so angry with Christians. You know what I mean? I get so angry because... And I try, and I, of course, I'm going to probably be one of those people that hurt people at some point. Of course. You know what I mean? And of course. I, I just, I don't want to be that person, but. When you are, be humble enough to go to the person that you've hurt. And apologize. And apologize. Right. You know, make that, make that way, make that opening. You know, for me, my, my heart's cry right now is. And I'm not saying all churches, I'm saying some. Right. We are a body. Mm. That's what the Bible says. And the Bible says that the hand can't say to the foot, because you're not a hand, you don't belong to the body. Right. So now let's flip this. One church can't say to another church, because you don't belong to me and you're not a member of my church, I'm sorry, we can't come together and we can't pray. As a body. We have an, we have an overwhelming issue right now across the world, not even the United States, the world, but let's talk about the United States. Because you're Lutheran or you're Catholic or you're Presbyterian or your Pentecostal, or your Baptist, or whatever else you want to be. Not Listen, can we come together and pray? Not just your members, but my members, your members, the members of the Presbyterian. Can we all just come together and pray? against the darkness, yeah. against the hatred, mm-hmm. against, against the people people that lack patience. Yes. Like me. Anger. Yeah. How it just flares, it goes from 0 to 100 in 2.2 seconds. Yeah. Like can we just come together as a people? And can we admit that we're those people? Thank you. Thank you. Cuz I know I am. And that's the truth, Trisha. Get me my husband said to me just tonight, can you just let me drive? Stop yelling at the people. Can you have some patience, Laurie? Which is the truth. Right. Which is the truth. And I just feel in my heart that we're so... Trisha, what... What is Jesus... Think about this for a second. How do you think Jesus feels when he looks down and he sees us so separated and segregated? How do you think he feels? Horrible. 
And we just keep, do, we haven't learned from anything no. in years past. Nothing. We just keep going around and around and around like mice on a wheel. Mm. Hello? Jesus people need Jesus people. Right. We can't be Jesus people for sinners or for anyone else if we ain't coming together. Because of our religion. That's because, it. Because, well, they There's don't believe how word. we believe. There's that word. Right. There's that and word. And that's why I can't stand... I, I don't want to be a religious person. I don't want to be... Don't categorize me like that. I want to be... I Categorize me as I'm a Jesus follower. That's what I want to be. I don't... I don't know if that's right or wrong, but I don't want to be a non-denominational or a Catholic or, and I don't want to be that. I want to right. be a Jesus follower. I want to follow what Jesus did here on earth. Am I going to get it right? Like he did? No. But my goal is to strive Come on. to be like him. And when I do mess up, to apologize. Come on. You know, because I am one of those, I have no patience. Zero. <laughs> so I don't know how you gain that, but I. Prayer. Right. It's prayer. And Trisha, I, I, I'm sorry, I'm just going to call it for what it is. We don't come together. Churches don't come together because I don't want that church to take my members. Mm. They're not yours. They're not yours. Right. They're Christ. Right. They belong to God. There is an order to things. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I just, you may lose members, you may lose tithes, you may lose offerings. Do you remember where you were before you got the tithes and the offerings? Mm, right. You were re totally, totally relying upon Jesus Christ. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, you know, I, that's where I'm at. And I, I feel in my heart that Jesus just be the center because look, and you were there. Jesus did that event and he used me to do it. I was just the vessel that right. said yes. Mm. Reluctantly. I did reluctantly, <laughs> but I did it because I was like, you know, I have, if you don't show up and I've said this and I'll continue to say it and people laugh when I say it, but I'm not kidding. Jesus, if you don't show up, I'm going to tell everybody go home because I have nothing to say. Right. And so I did the event. Trisha, I know that I know that I know that I know, like I know my name is Lori. Jesus wanted that event and Jesus wanted to show up and Jesus wanted to touch everybody and Jesus wanted to deliver his sons and his daughters and Jesus wanted to bring people to another level and Jesus wanted to overshadow and fill them father with power. Mm -hmm. He wanted to do it and he did it. Right. I mean, I don't know about you, ma'am, but when I stepped out of myself for a second, my knees were knocking. I was shaking and not because I was nervous because I wasn't. The presence of God came into that room so thick. And it was like that Sunday. And I, again, I say, if you don't show up, I'm going home. <laughs> you know, because... I mean, it, he definitely, that's... That's the thing, like, with this Jesus thing with me lately is that nobody can tell me that God's not real. Hey. Nobody can say hey. that, well, it was just a guy that lived 2000. No. No. You cannot tell he me. He is alive. Because on Friday night at the awakening, I felt the power of the Holy Spirit so powerfully. On Come that on, altar, talk on about that it. altar, right? I mean, Jesus literally stepped out of his, out of his 
comfort zone in heaven on. on the throne and stepped into my time zone and spoke to me. Yes, ma'am. Like, because what Lisi said to me, she doesn't even know me. Come on. I've never even met her. She did that. Her, Osiris, Denise, all three of them. All night. All night. Without knowing people and their circumstances and this, all who they were. Right. Lisi had no idea you were my daughter. She had no idea that my pastors, and she spoke into both their lives and made them both cry. I mean, I cried. And I don't cry. You know me. Mm. How long have you known me? Right. <laughs> I don't, I'm not a crier. I, I don't cry. And I cried. She laid hands on me. I heard God say, it's not going to come out until they lay hands on you. You, you got to have them lay hands on you. I'm not lay hands on me. Okay, God, sure. Right? Okay. And then you had the altar call, like, whoever wants prayer, come up here. And I was already up there. I was already, I was on the altar. I was like, oh, you, I was already, I was on that you altar. Were, you were with me. Yep. <laughs> and um, mm. she laid hands on me and she prayed and she pressed into my chest because that's what I, and it's funny because that's exactly what I was saying to God, this and I was saying it by myself, Jesus, this reactive anger is in my chest and I can't get it out. I can't get it out. So then she laid hands on me. That's exact. She, and he said it, have them lay hands on your chest and your back. And that's what and she And that's did. exactly, and I didn't even tell her that. I did not even tell her that. She just pushed on my chest and my back so hard. I could literally feel the prayer penetrating into my, in, into here. And I wasn't shaking. I wasn't crying. Like I was crying, but I wasn't shaking. Like my whole body wasn't shaking. I could just feel the presence of the Holy Spirit so loud. And then mm. she placed her hands on my head. And she was saying things that I say to God. Like my chaotic brain. She Like all the chaos. I see that. I see your chaos. I see it. And she's praying against the chaos in my head, right? See, you, that, that little fly, um, he's going to die, Jesus. I'm just saying. So she's praying, right, on my head. And then she's hugging me, right? And she's telling me to hug her, but I know it was God. Like, I, God was hugging me. And then we, she stopped praying, and she walked away from me. And I stood there, and it was like a couple minutes after that I felt this power just fall and my whole entire body was shaking like I could not like I just kept swinging around like and my whole body like I could feel it in my chest not a bad way but like I was overcome by the spirit and there's not one person that could ever tell me that Jesus isn't real come on if you're gonna try to tell me that then come try on. to tell me what that was come what on. was that that wasn't my emotions come on that was the Holy Spirit literally walking into my body yes, and pulling out that anger because then when I left and he the next day he told me I took that anger from you so when you go back to that anger that's on you in so many words but that's on you. Yeah. I just, I just took you that stop. from you. Yep. I just took that from you. And Trisha, that, that testimony right there, I don't mean to cut you off. No. Do you know how many people called me or text me and messaged me in Messenger? By the time I got home, 15, 20 text messages, not to mention the phone calls and the messages, and then in Messenger and Facebook, how many people? And I can tell you that nine out of 10 of those people said, God said, this is a new start. Mm -hmm. It's a new beginning. That's why I say redemption, restoration. That's what he did. Right. Because how he gave it to me, I walk every day, up one street, four miles. I haven't in two weeks. I need to stop Monday, but up one street, the awakening. What's that? Nothing all the way up the street except that. Turn the corner, come down the street. Friday. This Friday, 
What are you talking about? Can Nothing. We, can we talk in a sentence here? Seriously. <laughs> Next street going up the 26th. Now I look at my phone and I, I, I realize the 26th is a Friday. This is Jesus. This is all Jesus. Mm. Now I go, all right, I got it, Lord. I, I'm, I, I'll I put, it, so, I I'm put something together. Where do you want it, though? I'll put it right. together for you, though. Right. He was silent the rest of the work. That's all he said. Oh, no, I'm lying. And then he said five to nine. Whole walk, nothing. Two days later, whole day goes by, whole night goes by. Now I'm in bed trying to go to sleep. My man's on the side of me snoring. All of a sudden, Jesus starts talking. And he starts to say, my people have forgotten their first love. They have forgotten what I saved them from. Let me see. Excuse me. It's in Revelations, isn't it? Because I just yeah, read that. Yeah, but this is what this is what he said to me. I had to I had to write it on my phone. I had to open up my phone. The light is so bright, and I'm like, Jesus, please don't let him wake up. <laughs> he said to replace the old oil. Jesus to fill us up, to send us out in June. And then he said, I'm going to ask that you, you truly and honestly examine your heart and your emotions. Is Jesus Christ your first love? Have you not really thought about the height from which you have fallen? What Jesus Christ saved you from when you encountered him and he peeled back your sin and showed you how much he loved you? Trish, I was like... Okay. When I tell you he pulled that together. Mm, he did. And I was just the one that said, I'll do that for you, Lord. I'll do that for you. And out of that, he said, now you'll open my church. Uh, well, I didn't want to do that. I don't want to hey, be. I have that good pastor. What are you talking about? And he said, you will. Because I'm calling, it. he said, you will, and I'm calling you to that. You, you left the daycare for a destiny, and this is it. And there is more to come. There is more to come. I don't know what that means. And I'm okay with not knowing, because if you tell me, I'm probably going to run the other way anyways. <laughs> so just give it to me as it comes. Right. You're good with that. But in my heart, Trisha... The church is full, not full, but I've got a 20 year old. No, full, it's gonna be full. I saw that. I, I do too, but right now it's not, but not it yet. was only my first service, so. Not yet, it's not yet, but it's going to be. Now I don't know when that's gonna be, but I felt that, that day I came to your church, I felt that. Again, God doesn't speak to me about other people. But, but I, I think, felt that. I think in my heart, Jesus, just let me love your people well. Mm. Yeah, Sincerely. Don't be one of those people that hurts. Come on. Ha be a part of that church hurt. Right. You know, will I hurt people? Probably. Yep. And I know I will. But you'll hurt people even not being a bastard. Right. That's just what we're going to do. But my prayer is that, you know, you give me the opportunity to at least apologize right. to you. Yeah. Tell me the truth. Yeah. You know, but to see... You know, they, all right, there was about 14 people that came to my first service. 20-year-old and an 82-year-old and everything in between. I was like, Lord, only you could do that. Yeah. Only you could do that. That's so awesome. So, you know, I just really feel like I mean, there's a lot of... I mean, let's real, though, because you walked out. Dad told me. You're like, I don't think I'm supposed to do this. Yo, no. <laughs> and Jesus like, wait, what? And I'm going to tell you, now that I'm sitting here and looking back, even though it was last weekend, before I, before everything closed out last Friday, my pastor, my pastors, husband and wife, 
laid hands on me. And pastor said, Ellen, pray for Lori. And so she did. And man, I could feel it. And then pastor prayed for me. And then he looked at me when he was done and he said, and when the enemy comes, and he's going to, mm. and before he could finish what he was going to say, she said, Miss Ellen said, the Lord rebuke you, Satan. When I tell you, I know Jesus, I know that was all Jesus yeah. Friday. Yeah. I had nothing whatsoever to do with it. I know that. What I was, and maybe even a little bit now, mm, I think you got the wrong person, Jesus. And then I got to go, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. Yeah. Because that's not my thought. Right. That's his. That's because he knows exactly. That's the problem is because he knows what's going to happen when you fully surrender. So he's going to do anything he can to make sure that you stall. Mm -hmm. Even if you just stall, you may still go. But if you stall, that's good enough because some of those people that you could have gotten, well, you're not going to because you stalled a little bit. You know what I mean? And oh, yeah. That irritates me because we do that. We definitely do. We definitely do. Like, cause I know, like, uh, sure. go ahead. No, it is what it is. I just know. <laughs> uh, we stall. We There's stall. a lot of people that God just blew upon. That God filled them with new oil. Yeah. You know. Yo, you may think that I'm crazy. They may think that I'm crazy, but I'm going to say it anyways. I believe that my God is a miracle God. Mm. I do. And what I'm asking for is miracles, signs, mm. and wonders. How crazy would it be? And don't tell me that it can't happen because I know that it can. That the oil of heaven starts to come through the walls. Mm. And you can feel and smell the presence of God. For me, and I say it because, and it doesn't happen often, but when it does, I'm like, oh. I'll smell either bananas or flowers. And I know it sounds funny, That's crazy. especially like yellow roses mm. and it's Jesus's presence for me. Yeah. And I find it so beautiful because both are yellow and he knows that that's my favorite color. Wow. You know what I mean? Yeah. Isn't that like, yeah, that's cool. he's just so intertwined. If you make him, him. Not people. Right. Him. 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 Right. He's intertwined within you personally. He Like he's a loves, personal God. Yes. And he loves what you love. And he dislikes what you dislike. And he wants to be what you need. You're everything. Right. You know, I think Jesus... I think a lot of people put inside their minds or maybe they're indoctrinated with it, but well, you know, if I live for Jesus, I can't drink, I can't go out, I can't, you know, I, I can't hang out with my friends, I can't watch certain movies, I can't stop that, right. Right. <laughs> stop that because that's not how it is. I think Let that the Holy Spirit guide That's you. it, right there. Because you could still do certain things. And this is my opinion. It's not what the Bible says, not whatever, but you could still do certain things. It's what the Holy Spirit is saying. That's not good for you. Don't do that. Come on. Like for me, like I can't watch horror movies and that stuff. I don't know. It does something in my spirit. 
And some Christians can. Right. And that, and some Christians can go to like haunted houses because it's Come just on. fake. At Come the on. end of the day, you know what I mean? Like it's not, I can't. I don't know why I can't. Something inside me says, no, don't do that. Yeah. So I don't. You know, I don't know. I think everybody is different. For me, when I first got saved, it was, I was a year and a half in. I had just gone to my first church and I was with them for about a month. They came over a couple of times. They saw my boxes of CDs and tapes. Mm -hmm. What are you doing with those? Well, the Lord said for me to get rid of them. I had a collection because music has always been my outlet. Right. A collection probably close to a thousand of just all different types of music. And I just didn't have, it went from where it was supposed to be into boxes. And I didn't have enough strength to put them in a dumpster. I just didn't, or a garbage bag. I can't listen to secular music. Mm. Because, and I've tried, and immediately, it'll send me down a road I have no business going down. Mm. Secular music is hand in hand with alcohol yeah. and pain, no matter what the music is. And that's, for a lot of people, if you stop listening to a song, your memory bank will go back to a time where you heard that song and it'll tie into pain. Right. The enemy knows what he's doing. Right. You know what I mean? Fleetwood Mac, yo, Journey, yo. I can go places inside my mind you better get up out of that pit, man. Because right. if you don't, Jesus saved you from that. Yo, right. why are you going back there? So for me, I can't. You can. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And, you know, everybody is, everybody is different. And I walk. That's the beautiful thing. I walk is all different. And I think that maybe that's what churches, what is okay for some people is not okay for others and vice versa. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And maybe that's what the problem is with the churches. You know? You know, <clears throat> before we wrap up, but I heard, you know, a pastor said, I was listening to a pastor and they were talking about drinking wine and stuff. Mm -hmm. Now, and I don't, I don't think we're condoning going out and getting drunk and doing no. all that stuff, right? But like what he said made so much sense to me is everything on this earth, God created for us to enjoy. Mm -hmm. So having a glass of wine is not a bad thing. It's having multiple glasses of wine and that is your Lord and that is what you where you go to when you're in pain you go to a glass of wine when you are happy you go to a glass of wine when your emotions are high you go to that glass of wine like you're putting all of yourself into that and not into jesus when you start doing that that's when it's bad mm. but just having a glass of wine with your dinner and you're not getting drunk off your you know what i mean that what he was saying is it's really not it's not like that. Jesus created it all. I mean, they drank, he turned right. water into wine and had wine with them at the party. His people had wine and stuff. I don't really know if Jesus had wine, but but then I think about it. All right, now I'm going off subject. We are, we do have to end it, but I am going off subject because oh. it does say at the end of what in the last supper is like, this is the last time that I'm drinking from this the fruit, of, fruit the vine. of this vine. So He did drink wine, but he won't drink it again until we're, everything is... right. So, and I think that that's the point is that where we like, where are we putting all of our energy to all of our 
our energy should be towards Jesus. At the end of the day, it should be all towards Jesus. Our sadness, our happy, being our happy, anger. our anger. Mm. And then if we are going to have a glass of wine, okay, whatever. I think anything in excess. Exactly. Anything, yeah. anything that we do. Even just food. Right. Let's, yo, that's a, that's a demon that we don't ever look at it like that. Mm-hmm. Alcoholism, drug addiction, pornography, yep. adultery, gluttony. Right. And gluttony sometimes is not. How about it's what you decide you're going to put in your mouth. That you know that you shouldn't. Mm -hmm. So anything in excess. Right. I think is just. Bad. Right. But we're all sinners. Come on. We all choose bad things. Hey. We all need Jesus. At the end of the day. I'm not fat for no reason. You know (laughs) what I mean? Like. And this is a. I'm not even lying. I want to cry about it. This is like. One of the hottest things I've ever done in my life. Right. I was doing so good. All of a sudden, like, boop, off the wagon you went. Fried food, junk food. It's so like, hard to get back on. Oh. And I just said, Lord, I need you again. Yeah. I repent. I need you again. Can you put me back on this thing? So I've already purposed come Monday on my grind again. You know, and it's not for any other reason, but when I look in the mirror, Mm. I know my man loves me just the way I am, but it's when I look in the mirror, I don't like me. Yeah, that's good. And truth be told, you know how hot it is sometimes to breathe? I'm going to walk. I'm going to walk. I'm going to do my intermittent fasting Mm -hmm. and I'm going to start eating the way I was. I can't. Little by little, step by step. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. Well, before we go over too much, you don't want to, we don't want to. No, we do not. 45 minutes again. No. I mean, we, we do could not. keep talking. We definitely <laughs> could. We will once we hit stop. We're just going to keep talking anyway, so. But anyway, this was fun. It really was. But I pray for every person that has commented on our posts, our reels, our Facebook page, mm-hmm. our Instagram, YouTube, whatever. I pray for those that have been hurt mm, yeah. by the church, by the holy people. Yeah. That you may have, without knowing that you have, put them in a position and in a place that they didn't belong. Yeah. And they hurt you. They said words that, you know, you believed and it didn't come to pass. Or... Whatever the case, I pray that the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords steps into your time and heals your brokenness. That you would, if you hear this, I pray that you would get alone and just... Talk to God out loud and be honest with him. If you're mad, cuss. Do what you have to do. He understands. He he hears. He knows. He wants you to be honest with him. He wants you to, to let it out. To let it out, yes. And just give it to him. And I pray that Jesus the Christ would meet you in your brokenness, meet you in that place that, yeah, he lifts the anger, he lifts the pain, he gives you a sense of his presence, he gives you a sense of his peace, 
and he would invade your space where you are right now. I pray for those that are struggling. You used to walk with God, you don't anymore. And you feel like God doesn't want to hear from you. You feel like, yeah, you're miles away. But God, don't let the enemy mm. keep speaking. He, Jesus loves you. He loves you. He's married to the backslider, the Bible says. I was a backslider three times. Come home, he's saying. He's waiting on the porch for you. I pray that God would fill them, Trisha. They're broken for reasons. We understand it. I pray that they feel that Holy Spirit that mm. I felt that Friday night. I pray, Jesus, that you just fill them with that Holy Spirit that yes. I felt. Jesus. That overcoming spirit that wasn't me, but that was you, that you fill them with that spirit yes, Lord. right where they are so they can feel you and hear you. Yes, Lord. And then you can heal their heart from the broken that yes. us humans Jesus. have damaged. And we're sorry that we do that. Father, forgive us. I pray, Father, that you would step into our time for every person on the other screen, every person on the other side that is listening. Touch them, Jesus. Touch them and invade their space when they lie down and put their head on a pillow mm. and they're all alone with their thoughts. There may be someone on the side of them, but they're alone with their thoughts. Yes. Jesus, touch them. Mm. Bring tears to their eyes because they can feel your presence. Yes. Jesus, we don't do this podcast for us. No. We do this for you and for you to receive all the glory and the honor. And we do it, Lord Jesus, for people, for their names to be recorded in the Lamb's yes. book of life. So, Lord, record some names. Jesus, you're married to the backslider. Bring them home by the power and the blood of the Lamb. Yes. Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. Well, that was a good that was a good talk. We didn't know what we were gonna talk about today, so we sure didn't. Until next time. We're, we're just, just kicking in with Jesus. Jesus. God bless you.